Greetings, this is another video overview by the Flashlight Reviewer Self-Built. Today I'm looking at something a little bit different. It's a diving light from Orca Torch, which is a new manufacturer. Uh, they used to be known under the name uh, Brinty, or Brint, not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, but they're now called Orca Torch. And this is one of their first models, the D500, uh, which is a diving flashlight. So it's rated for diving, I believe, up to 150 meters, uh, which is a pretty good depth, obviously. Uh, as you might guess, it's a very solid light, and I'll go through its full uh, specs in a moment. It's also a 1x18650 light. I don't believe it supports primary uh, cells, but I'll reconfirm that for the full review. Um, again, as I said, it's a substantial light, obviously meant to withstand the extra pressure and depth. If you take a look even right here at the head, you can probably get a feel. Uh, there's a very thick lens there, much thicker than usual. You can see, um, it's maybe slightly opaque, again, because of its increased thickness. Uh, you can see at the base of it there, there's a cool uh, white uh, XML2 emitter uh, with a relatively smooth reflector, obviously designed for throw, which is, of course, what you would likely to want in an underwater environment uh, to be able to see a fairly good distance. Uh, again, very thick sort of head. You can see very thick O-ring uh, in there as well. Um, there's no tail cap switch. You can see it's a flat tail cap, so the light can tail stand. There's also lanyard attachment points you know, here in the tail, uh, as you can see. What's interesting about the light is the switching. It's controlled by a magnetic switch here in the head. Now, this is normally sealed. Uh, in my case, I can open it up to show you the insides. You're not going to be able to do this on the shipping lights. This was just done for the sake of the review, so you can see the inside. And I'm also just take it, take it apart here so you can see how it works. It's a little bit different from most switches, and that you can see it's actually sealed. So even if I open the switch up, there's no access to electronics. There's just a little flat contact surface there. And here in the uh, switch portion, you can see there's a little magnet at the base of that spring. So all that happens is when you, as you screw this uh, all together, is all you do to switch modes is you're making contact between that little magnet uh, and the contact plate underneath. And that's what switches modes. So it's completely isolated and independent. Uh, again, the shipping lights will have this Loctite, so you won't be able to do this. Uh, but that's just sort of the design. The switch is, that is therefore not a clicky switch, it's just a press-release switch. The spring is what gives you the resistance that pushes it back up. And you will mode change just by having it pressed down all the way so that that battery makes contact. So it's a good way to sort of isolate the switch from the rest of the components. Uh, let me sort of show you the inside. Uh, I had the light locked out here at the head. That's one point I should mention as well. You'll see when I get it fully open. Um, it has anodized screw threads, uh, traditional kind of triangular cut, but of good quality. Uh, what it means is that if you, and you can see there's just the contact surface here that connects with the um, inside of the barrel tube there. Um, what you can see, what that means is that you can just unlock, you can lock the light by a simple twist of the head. So just to sort of again show you a bit of the, the body, you can see where it makes contact. Uh, you can also sort of make out there at the base, uh, there's a um, fairly substantial looking spring uh, in the tail of the, of the light. If we look here in the head, you'll see there's just a more kind of traditional uh, flat uh, contact disc, slightly raised, so you should be able to use uh, flat top cells okay. And I'll report back on my testing of various types of cells in the full review. So you just put an 18650 in the tube. You can also see as well, there are double O-rings, and they're very well lubed here on my sample. I, I've in fact removed a bit of lube uh, with all my testing, uh, but I've actually done waterproof testing as well. And you'll see that the light did quite well. Um, I, I'm not a scuba diver, so I don't have a way to test it at depth. So what I did instead is I froze it uh, for 12 hours and saw that it worked quite well. And the first thing you'll notice is the light just came on. That's one feature about the light. Again, I can twist the head to lock it out. As soon as you make battery contact, it comes on and it comes on in low. You can turn the light off just by pressing the switch. So that's the original design here of the interface. It comes on automatically when connected. Press the switch to turn it off if you don't want it on. You press the switch again, you'll get it to come back on in the last mode. And you can, actually it comes on in high, sorry, not the last mode, it advanced. You can see that the by pressing the switch repeatedly, you cycle between max, or high, we'll call it medium, low, and off. So that's the mode sequence. It's a little bit different from most lights. So from off, you go from high, medium, low, back to off, and then back up to high. Now I'm going to do full testing of the light. I can see there is some pulse width modulation here at the low level, but it's barely detectable. So it's at a very high frequency. You're not likely to see it here on the camera, but I can get some hint of it. Um, I don't find it very distracting though, but I am, I am sensitive to pulse width modulation so I can detect it. Uh, you'll see full testing results in my full review at Candle Power Forums. In terms of the beam, you can see right there, uh, spill beam, maybe a little bit narrow given the thick head design. It has a very clear and sharp hotspot. We'll just maybe move it back up to max. 
As you can see, as I go with distance, the hotspot's fairly clear. Not an overly sharp demarcation, just kind of a smooth transition, I think, from hotspot to spill, but still a relatively throwy beam. You can see the overall focus of it here. It's very much meant more for throw than for a flood, um, but you get kind of an overall, you know, nice kind of, I think, smooth uh, beam pattern, uh, more heavily focused for, for throw, is really what it comes down to. No artifacts or beam rings that I can see in the beam, so it looks fairly clean as we move through the levels again. So a very straightforward interface. Works well, I suspect, as a diving light. Um, if you look at what comes with it, open up the package here, you see there's a number of items. So you get your uh, warranty card, you get your product manual uh, that walks you through the specs and features of the light and how it works. You have uh, a couple of extra O-rings, a generous amount, which is thoughtful because it's important for water safety, waterproofness I mean. Uh, you have a standard kind of wrist strap that you often see on sort of diving lights, so you can get it on and and up as, as you need to with this extra kind of you know, rubber attachment. Um, one thing I find quite interesting is this attachment, which is um, a way to carry the light, um, I think for diving purposes again, where you can sort of strap it onto yourself. And so it, it, sorry, so I'll do it on this hand. You just have to thread the Velcro uh, through the catch here. And you can, depending on the size of your hand, you'd usually be wearing a wetsuit, I would suspect, for something like this. Um, you know, depending on, on the size of your hand and, and how you have it on, there's an attachment right here. So you can you can install the light. Let me just get that off for the moment. So I'm going to do this off camera because it's a little bit easier to to do and then have my arm stretched around the camera. There we go. So you can just mount it right into the the attachment. Install this on your hand. Tighten it up, and you can see you get a pretty good. Pretty good feel and pretty good grip, and you can then control the light as you were, you know, swimming around underwater. So, a good setup, kind of a nice extra attachment. Uh, seems fairly robust. Seems to work fairly well. Uh, I think it'd be a kind of a good addition for those who are looking for it for the, this kind of purpose. Nice to see, you know, thoughtfully included uh, for a diving light because it's certainly something, you know, a little bit different that you don't uh, don't see every day. So anyway, that gives you kind of an overview. You'll see some full testing results for how it performs in my full review, which you'll find at Candle Power Forms. You'll find them in the review form under the username Self-Built or off my personal website at flashlightreviews.ca. Thanks for your time. I hope you found that useful.